Well, you, you, you have a book about migrating monoliths to microservices. And one of the topics you cover, which I find interesting, is where to begin. So I think this is an interesting challenge because it seems overwhelming at first. And you talk about breaking it down into parts and, and potentially leaving some component of the monolith still standing. So as a developer, where do you begin? Well, I always start with the why. As, as, as developers, we can be very, it's very easy for us to become activity oriented. It's a term I quite like, which is we get obsessed by doing something without often understanding why. And a lot of developers say, I want to do microservices and then have to reverse engineer a reason. Always start with the why. Who cares? Like I, you know, if I'm being mildly provocative, I'll say your boss probably doesn't care about microservices and the users of your software absolutely don't care. So what's mm. in it for them? Because yeah. if you have a framing for what, often the people that struggle to know how to start often don't have that overarching understanding about why they're even starting that journey. Once you have that goal in mind, we have a scaling issue with our application. We've stuck as many copies behind a load balancer as we can. We still can't serve the scale we're going to see for our customer base. So that's what we're, we're making a change to our architecture for that reason. Straight mm -hmm. away, that sharpens the mind. Yeah. That means you're going to look to extract functionality, which is around your scaling bottlenecks mm -hmm. or, you know, the, the, you want to do more development in parallel. Well, then you may be looking to split your architecture down around organizational boundaries, but you're, you've got a target, which is looking at your improved cycle time and your decreased coupling between teams. Once you have that, why the, the, where you start stuff becomes a much easier conversation and the, I think the other challenge set with larger enterprise organizations is even if there was a why at some point, that why has become so overloaded with other things people are trying to attempt. You've now got a list of a hundred different things this organization thinks the microservice architecture is going to bring to them. And when you've got so many completing priorities, again, you get into that kind of like haziness. So with those types of clients, I just urge them to do some sort of stack ranking. Okay, you've got these 10 different priorities. Some of them are more important than others. So let's just do a little bit of that. Right. Okay, well, this is actually the most important thing. Okay, well, we'll try and do all 10, but we're going to focus it, our work through this lens first and, and we'll just see how we go. And that's the other problem with this is that how do you know if it's working out? If you don't know what it is you're trying to achieve, how do you know when to stop or when to reverse course or when to change your mind? You know, do you want a thousand microservices? I don't know. So you need that sort of understanding about what your expectations are about how you're going to achieve this goal to also mean that you can just be giving you constant feedback onto it. It's like, you know, is it working? Should we stop? Should we do something else? And I think if you decide it's not working, great, change your mind. That's all right. Yeah, I mean, it's been proven in places which have comparison to the Let's talk about your conference. Um, was the conference 